You've asked for it, so here it is. Welcome back to Teach Man and Fish Channel. So a couple of you guys have asked how the beehives are doing. Let's dive in and talk about what's been going on for the last couple of months. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is just gonna be a quick beehive update. We're coming to the end of the summer and we're gonna figure out whether or not these hives are gonna make it through the winter. In previous videos, you saw us start back in January. We had some state grant hives. We set up some homemade built swarm traps, put them out, had success, ended up capturing three hives. And there you can see the beautiful white comb for that new swarm trap being transferred over. There weren't enough hives that were granted to us from the state. So we actually had to build our own top bar hives. I can tell you it's not a complicated process to build these. As a matter of fact, the way they're designed, the purpose and intent of them is to be simple and be built with hand tools in third world conditions. They are not a complicated hive to build. Little bit of shop music there in the background. So the hard parts of completing the hive body are done. Now it's just for making the top bars. There's a bunch of different ways to get the bees to know where to make the comb. I just melt a little bit of wax on the top bar and it seems to be working fine. I decided to paint all of the boxes that we made ourselves, giving them a little bit more time to last in the elements and outdoors. I also wrapped each of the covers in aluminum sheeting to again, help with the weathering and the lasting. That's a swarm trap box that we had transferred over into that homemade top bar hive. It's interesting for you to note that the swarm trap boxes that worked best were the ones that we burned in the inside, and that's imitating a hollowed out lightning strike in a tree. That's all those bees there, raising their rear ends, spreading their pheromones, telling everyone the queen is in here, this is the smell of our hive, come locate in here now. I'll put a link up above to the swarm trap videos. So pretty much for the rest of the summer, we learned what to look for in the hives, how to maintain, did a lot of YouTube research, and I have one mentor to help advise me. When to help them out with some feed, when not to. And what we should be looking for when we're going inside the hive, trying to find the queen, which, by the way, I stink at, but it's an important function to see whether or not there's a healthy queen acting inside that hive. Wait until you see the next part, you'll hear the excitement in my voice. It's the swarm. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this. I did end up with the swarm, caught some of it on video, and what a fascinating thing it was all over the place. I think I know where they're going. And it's from my hive there. Come to find out, this was all just wishful thinking. 
These guys said sayonara, thanks for all the flowers. Over to my swarm box over there. Wow, look at that. It looks like there's bees in all three of my hives. It ended up being the bees that stayed behind after the swarm. And the thing that made me take note was all the scout bees that were going in and out of my swarm trap. So we're actually getting to see this swarm trap work. I don't know where these bees are coming from, if they're mine yet or not. This is fascinating. Spoiler, those were mine. And I didn't see them, I actually heard them from about 80 yards away. Man, I hope they don't go too far. I have no idea what just happened there. I went into my garage and there was about seven or eight bees buzzing around in my garage and that's unusual. So I stepped back out and I have that swarm trap on the side of the tree. So I went over and looked at that and there was scout bees going in and out, no pollen. I know that means they haven't settled in yet. Then about two or three minutes later, I hear that hum over top of the pond. And that's where the video picked up where I started to chase them, they went from over top of the trees over here, right along the tree line, and then left my property on the other side. I guess I'll, I knew I had a hive that was really large. I'll find out whether or not I lost bees there. <laughs> that was wicked. Hindsight being 2020, when I piece it all together, I saw a lot of scout activity the week before this swarm occurred. My neighbor even said that he had a bunch of bees flying around the ports and holes in his boat. I now know that that's evidence of those scout bees looking for their new place to head to. You also may have noticed that I put in the background a security light. It's motion activated, solar powered, and I put it in because there's been an increase in bear activity in the property. It went through a chicken coop wire like it was nothing and ended up getting my whole batch of baby chicks. I know that light won't actually stop any bear that's intent on getting at my bees in its honey, but it also gives me some warning that something is out there when I can see that light go off. Who knows, maybe click subscribe and we'll see what happens in the hunting woods this season. There might be bear on the table for dinner. So this was a hive that just plain emptied out. It reduced in size by 70 to 80%, I would say. And I wasn't sure for two months whether or not I even had a queen in there. But come to find out, I did find some new queen cells, looked like they'd been opened, and lo and behold, there was larva growing in there. So while this hive has plenty of room left to grow and all those combs are empty, you can see I was shaking that one there. There's absolutely nothing in it. That's from when all those bees left the hive. Looks like we got some kind of beetles running around there. We're going to be developing the skills necessary to get these through the winter. Part of that means learning the parasites and what to do. I don't know if that's a hive beetle or not. We'll have to do some research to find out what that is. First beetle I've ever seen. There's another queen cell. Now this is a hive that I thought was actually queenless from the swarm. So there's all that glue that I was telling you about that sticks the hive together all through there. We aren't quite a homestead, but we're definitely trying to build some skills. That's where they lay, right? Uh, they're packing this with uh, honey and pollen. Yeah, I can see the orange pollen. If you know what is making orange pollen in the fall, I sure would like to know in the comments down below. Are you taking these out? Actually, let's look for the queen. Yeah, I'm taking everything out. We did learn how to find and identify a queen. I'm not going to tell you I'm any good at it, but they are a challenge for me to find. I saw one that was really nice with some pollen. Yeah, orange. Right, right. Yeah.
take a picture of that. So we've got larva in here, which means we do, we 100% we have a queen in here. Last time I was in this hive, I was worried that either I killed the queen or this is where the swarm came from. Oh, stung me. He's a goner. Yep, just took him out. <laughs> so as you know, I'm doing all this and learning all this during the COVID-19 quarantine. There's no large group meetings. There's no ability to attend classes. So I'm doing this through conversations and a lot of YouTube education. So there wasn't a whole lot of honey in that last hive, which is what gives me the worry about that hive making it through the winter. So the next learning curve we're going to have to go through will be the preparation for the winter, getting these hives strong and set up for a long cold winter. The second hive that we have is a much stronger hive. In fact, it's the strongest one that I've got. They're packing away the honey. We've still got some of those beetles and I think I've just seen my first wax moth. Uh, here you can see I'm cleaning off some of that glue or propolis that they use to seal up the hive. You gotta crack that open. There were also some ants running around in the hive. I don't know if that's detrimental. If you know, please make a comment down below. This was showing you guys one of the strongest hives that I have. You can see the order, you've got the larvae there, the capped brood, and even the honey. The glow of that capped honey. This is the one that's teaching us what a strong hive looks like. Definitely my first example of a wax moth and we get to do the research to find out what we do about that. Earlier in the summer, I broke one of the combs by not <laughs> flipping the comb properly. <laughs> but they did attach it to the other side. Really small hive, like you're saying. Oh, it's all messy at the bottom. Where are all Don't the tell bees? my wife that the fix was oh. her hair beret, and that's where it went. It's a small hive, but it's got. We got to learn what bearding looks like, which is basically the bees hanging out on the front porch to cool off during the evening heat. I've got two more empty top bar hives, so we're set up to go ahead and do swarm traps next year. That's kind of where I want to end up, is five hives being maintained. I can envision how this gets out of control and you just want to keep expanding and expanding and you end up with all these hives. Here you can see my son wanted to make some wax candles the way they used to. It was fascinating to watch him learn and I explained to him this is how they've been making these candles for thousands of years. Pretty interesting. Oh, it We just used cotton butcher twine for the wick. This is the way they made light? 150 years ago? So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is another playlist that you might enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.